When I pictured Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, I didn't think that the Disney princess would look like she's been injecting herself with horse hormones. <laughs> she scares the piss out of me. I'm thinking maybe we can just shoot her. Like if I use a whole bunch of quick drawing ombres, then we can fill those titties with lead. When I thought up that strategy, I expected her to care. No, guys, come on, shoot faster. What kind of weird Kevlar nips is she rocking? Okay. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Totally Accurate Battle Simulator. Where last episode, I asked you guys to leave your armies in the comments of that video for me to face off against them today. And you guys left about 6,000 armies for me to fight? And if I spent even a minute on each of them, this video would last for like five days. So I'm gonna try to get to as many as I can, but I just wanted to say, I'm sure there are a whole bunch of very interesting, entertaining, well thought out ideas that I couldn't get to, but still very much appreciate. We'll start things off with the most liked comment on that video being the seven deadly sins, with lust represented by Cupid, sloth by Snuffy, gluttony by the Hobbit, greed by bank robbers, pride by the cheerleader, envy by horse, and wrath by the shouter. Well, a whole bunch of people seem to believe that Jesus died for our sins, so maybe it's time for Jesus to pick himself back up and kill them in round two? I don't know. Like, if you've never seen any of these videos before, the way it works is I can only spend as much money as my opponent has. Like, I'm limited to 5,080, as if it was a typical tabs campaign. That way it'll keep things fair and a little bit challenging. That also means that I could get a couple of Jesuses and then maybe pair them with Something like Santa Claus? I mean, they share a big day. I'm sure they're on great terms, and it's perfect. The big question is, can Jesus get Snuffy to pray? I get the feeling that much thickness isn't interested in kneeling. We also need to worry about the fact that Santa is a little bit horny. Jesus can resist, but Santa, not so much. Guys, I, I wanted to have a Claus and Christ team up. Not to watch you two dock, so... Could you maybe kill the opponent? All the heavy lifting is being left to Santa, as if it actually was Christmas. Next up, we have a mess. It's just a mess. One Blackbeard, two Cupids, and two Watches. Yeah, I could definitely see a whole bunch of units humping one another underneath a cloud of arrows and anchors to be a bit of a mess, but I chose this one because it's a bunch of units that I don't think I've ever tried to send to space before. I've definitely strapped many Tabs units to rockets and sent them up, but the Huacha, Cupid, Blackbeards, they all stand out, so I'm thinking maybe if we use a bunch of firework archers, we might be able to get lift off. It's gonna be difficult not to shoot my own units, though. This map is a little bit tight. Fingers crossed. You guys got this? I forgot that Blackbeard has a new ability. Okay, you guys might want to shoot a little bit faster before he calls in another salvo. No, and the watches reload as well. Luckily, they're made of graham crackers and fall apart pretty easily. Oof. Um, yeah, and you guys are about to become the s'mores. <laughs> what happened? Like, we just got rained on a little bit. It's freaking Blackbeard, man. That new ability's nuts. I know I just said I wouldn't use more money than my opponents, but I'm making an exception because I really want to see what the Banished could do here. I made this unit. I can't even remember what it does. It's just super badass looking and rains down lightning, as well as some real good strikes. All right, so far so good. As long as you can avoid becoming a point blank pin cushion. What is wrong with you? You're some kind of terrifying eldritch horror and yet you died to pointy sticks. I wonder if this is one of those levels that I could just cheese using the ballooner because they're so cheap that I can get dozens upon dozens of them, but a single ballooner should be able to kill just about any unit, right? Because all they have to do is grab them with their gross jizzmy hands and then away they go. He has to come plummeting down like a meteor. Oh, oh. Not on top of everybody, you idiots! Oh my god, nobody got anywhere close to the watches. <laughs> Why did I use balloons against sharpened sticks? <laughs> I'm such an idiot! 
All right, then no more playing around. I'm gonna use guns. I try not to resort to these things all the time, but they're popular in warfare for a reason. I think they're gonna be pretty friggin' effective here, especially if I spread them out enough so they don't all get hit by the same arrows or cannonballs or whatever is raining down on us. Now, all I ask is that you guys shoot the enemy and not each other. Try to aim for the enemy and not the back of the head in front of you. That's what I'm talking about, okay? Now, if we can reload at the speed of smell and then shoot one more time, all I'm asking, one more time at Blackbeard and that should be enough. I've given the Musketeers a whole lot of crap over the years, but I'll give it up. They actually do pull through sometimes. It's the revenge of the underrated, one of every unit that you don't use as much. Tab's units are really starting to feel like Pokemon now because there's just so friggin' many of them that there's no way of keeping track. So I was going through all of the factions, picking out stuff that I would never consider to use in an army or strategy, or stuff that came out with a recent update that I used once and then immediately forgot, despite the fact that they're incredibly overpowered. So I get the feeling this might be kind of difficult. I really can't resist sending out Optimus Prime because he's just so janky and weird and costs almost the perfect amount. I don't think he's gonna be able to win, but he should be able to put on a good show, twerk quite a bit, get harpooned and snaked, and I think he's got a fungus or two on him, and is frozen solid, he got hit by a boat. It's just such a mess, he can't even stand up. Come on, Optimus, ah, oh, damn it. Where's Shia LaBeouf when you need him? I don't think there's any reasonable army I can use to face off against these things, so I'm gonna have to hope for something completely unreasonable. If we use a Da Vinci tank and then back that up with some cheerleaders, then we will get lift off. Rather large tornado that will then rip through the Taekwondo units that I decided to use as bait. <laughs> Fingers crossed! Come on, you got this, Da Vinci. No! Why does the ice make you stop spinning? Since when is that a thing? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Cheer harder. Okay, th thank you. They actually did it. So we've got a tornado, but it's a very slow moving and unsatisfying tornado. Don't go off the edge. It just exploded into skeletons. Why? Oh, I got the Necromancer out there. Is that what he does? It's like I said, I have no idea. <laughs> this is gonna be impossible. These units may be incredibly powerful, but the one thing they aren't is immune to love. <laughs> so I'm hoping if we get a couple of fully automatic Cupids back here, then maybe we could just have them fight one another. Still got some money left over. I'm kind of hoping that I can find something like a uh, fully automatic Gatling cannon. That would help as well. And then, uh, oh, I don't know, gnomes? Yeah, just send in all of the gnomes. <laughs> Fingers crossed. I get the feeling the gnomes are just gonna feed the necromancer. It's just gonna end up being a whole bunch of tiny skeletons or not. Yeah, fully automatic Gatling cannon may have been a little unfair there, but I'll take it. I hate you! One ballooner. Any map, any win condition, just one ballooner. Well, it's definitely not an overly complicated army, but it is surprisingly interesting because it's like I said earlier, the ballooner is weird. It can practically one-shot anything. Anything that it can grab with its gross jizzmy hands, fly up into the air with, and then catapult into the ground. <laughs> so like, what could I buy that costs less than or equal to the ballooner that would be able to avoid that. I don't have all that many options. I'll show you what I mean. We'll send out a squire. He's got steel. He should be able to stab this thing, but no, he's gonna get grabbed. <laughs> They're gonna take off and then probably come burning back down upon re-entry. Oh, the ballooner didn't get his lucky meteor strike off, which means we're gonna have a, a tango, except not really. Like, again, the squire can't swing his sword because of the gross hands. Yeah. He's just getting tossed around or jerked off. Ooh, power jerk. That's rude. Oh, I see the strategy here. We could use a poacher. 
he should be able to fill this guy with arrows before he gets anywhere close. Or just one to the nuts. That's not going to be enough. He still has takeoff. Okay, again. Didn't have the burn up on re-entry, but the poacher still died. So we need something that can kill this thing at long distance, but that doesn't use arrows because apparently his puffy pantaloons are arrow proof. <laughs> Maybe something like the Sarissa? It's a pretty long range. You should be able to give him a poke before... Nope, that's not going to do it. I, I know that they originally said in the comment, I hate you, and I, I really do hate this thing. Well, they may be arrow-proof, but what are you willing to bet they aren't spear-proof? Because they've never had to deal with anything like this before. Hopefully, you can hit them right in the family jewels. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. His grandkids felt that one. You see, sometimes you just need to simplify your ball-destroying technology. How about Snow White and the Seven Dwarves? One pirate queen and seven miners. When I pictured Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, I didn't think that the Disney princess would look like she's been injecting herself with horse hormones. <laughs> she scares the piss out of me. I'm thinking maybe we can just shoot her. Like if I use a whole bunch of quick drawing ombres, then we can fill those titties with lead. When I thought up that strategy, I expected her to care. No, guys, come on, shoot faster. What kind of weird Kevlar nips is she rocking? Okay. This is gonna be a problem. She hasn't bathed in weeks. She has absolutely no problem using your blood as a substitute. <laughs> Thank you, Quick Draw. It's a murder, a scarecrow with lots of cheerleaders or a custom unit that throws a lot of crows. I wanted to put the scarecrow out in the field on a hill because I thought it was fitting and it would look cool, but now I'm immediately regretting it because he's so far away from the line. I have so much distance to cover to get to him. Thinking maybe we could use something like the witch? One of those units that I kind of forgot about but is surprisingly powerful? Witches should have some amount of control over a bunch of birds, right? Or not? I mean, we killed the Scarecrow, but the cheerleaders left standing means we lose. I think the strategy here is to bum rush him, or more specifically, horse rush him. Horse should be at the top of the animal food chain, far above crow. So hopefully you guys will go balls deep before the crows are activated. Oh, it hurts. Oh, there's so many of them, but it doesn't matter because they don't have wobbly knees. Time to face off against the creator and his creation. One Captain Sauce and one Santa Claus. I see how it's gonna be. Obviously one of you was gonna try to use my own overpowered creations against me. <laughs> I don't even know how I made something this powerful. Nonetheless, how I can beat them. Like, if I was to get in their heads, what is something that myself and Santa would be weak against? Maybe attractive women in tight shorts? If we use a couple of Lara Crofts, then maybe she can just gun us down? Oh, okay, watch out for the fart toss. That hurts quite a bit. First volley of bullets didn't do a whole lot. Come on, reload, Lara. You got this, maybe? Am I dodging? I think I might be dodging. I'm definitely punching or grabbing one of the two. Santa is still chopping. I don't think this is gonna work. This is not going well, damn it. <laughs> Come on, she needs bigger boobs. If there's one thing I've learned on my YouTube journey is that the only thing that can truly beat Captain Sauce is Captain Sauce. It's so easy to get inside your own head and get down on yourself, but hopefully a stronger, more handsome version of me will be able to take down myself and Santa. He's definitely got a whole bunch more abilities. He, he can freeze, he can lightning, he can throw tomatoes. I, I think he's got a couple of shurikens somewhere, but he's not gonna need them. <gasps> Way to go, self-confidence. How about a bit of a ragtag group? We've got the weakest unit from each faction. Is now a good time to try out some of the new custom units that I downloaded for this episode? <laughs> like the Xenomorph, because I can afford exactly one Xenomorph. 
which is surprisingly fitting. I don't know if you've ever seen an alien movie before, but ripping 13 idiots apart is kind of their specialty. I have complete and total faith that that dynamite is gonna ruin a whole bunch of people. The balloon is not gonna be able to bring him back to space. He's having lunch? I'm hearing a whole lot of eating, like that mouth in a mouth is sucking. <laughs> Gross. Oh, uh, no, bird, where are you going? Where, where do you think you're running to? <laughs> it's time to be a hero. Nope, nope, time to run away. <laughs> Don't play with him. There you go. Finish your meal. I also found a unit called Poop, and it just seems to be living poop. It just seemed fitting to have crap face off against a completely different kind of crap. Hopefully they do something. I, I don't really know what poop would do on the battlefield other than get scooped up, I suppose. C could you please come back down? Thank you. <laughs> Maybe they can throw turds or like waft their scent? Or just touch people and gross them out until they dry out and uh, just nothing. <laughs> they do nothing. I really couldn't resist trying something called Flying Armed Minigun Ultra Instinct Armored Horse. That sounds... broken. <laughs> yup, that, that's about right. Okay, it is going to hit absolutely nothing unless it's aiming for clouds. <laughs> it looks majestic, but it doesn't seem to want to fight. Did, did you have any plans to do anything other than shoot the sky? I don't think I have any ranged units, so killing this thing might be tricky. It's just gonna keep ramming its strange horse balls into us. <laughs> That's all it's doing. Oh, oh, wait, the ballooner might be able to break its flight. Or not. You guys are gonna get it stuck in a tree. You're geniuses. <laughs> now go in for the kill. You got it, hobbits. Time to... Be a hero or get kicked in the teeth. Yeah, that, that works too, I suppose. Can it fly off the map? Like, if we spook it enough, will it just fall to its death? Or is it going to get stuck in the trees? It's like fighting a kite. I don't understand how we're supposed to beat this thing. It's either going to beat itself or we're going to be bored in a draw. Probably both. Oh, 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 there we go. There we go. And it's done. Wow, definitely Ultra Instinct Super Armored Hyper Mega Rare Horse, I love it. Praise the Lord, we've got 15 pharaohs, 5 priests, and a baker's dozen of hobbits. Not to intentionally bring things full circle on the episode, but I get the feeling Jesus would not be happy about those priests converting, and about all these pharaohs trying to steal his thunder, so maybe he can get them to pray and convert back? And uh, we can obviously help him with his good friend, Santa Claus. We could even get some little helpers in there on his back. Does that seem reasonable? Yeah, just a, a couple of friendship bullets going their way. I don't think the hobbits are gonna do much. They're just kind of lumps. Actually, even Santa's having a hard time moving. That was a whole lot of prayer coming from the pharaohs. They're technically supposed to be the closest to God that man can be, but we've got God's son. How much closer can you get than that? <laughs> Come on, Santa, get in there. Oh, he's right on the doorstep. Oh, it's working. Jesus' powers are winning. <laughs> and so are the claws. It's, it's, it's mostly the claws. Yeah, I feel like the claws are doing a lot of the damage, actually. <laughs> I mean, you can feel overwhelmed with the sense of worship, or you could just get stabbed in the chest. You know, and I think that's going to be it for this episode of Totally Accurate Battle Simulator, guys. And once again, big thanks to everybody who contributed on the last episode. Not only because I wouldn't be able to do these videos without you guys, but also because then that video ends up going a lot further. So much interaction makes YouTube recommend it to more people, and then more people show up to give me more recommendations. So the series gets to go on for longer. So everybody ends up winning. But once again, if you guys want to see more of this, or if you want to see me continue with the custom campaign that I was doing last episode, be sure to leave a like in the video, leave a comment letting me know, and I'll return to stab Teuton D's nuts again soon. But thanks so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.